It's no stress. Aloha! Top of the morning, friends and family. Welcome to the Reptile Breeder Show in Daytona, Florida. Once a week, we upload a beautifully edited cinematic masterpiece to this channel. This video is uncut. And in today's Uncut video, I'm sitting here with Mr. Shannon Peck of uh, Green Dragon Brokers. Green Dragon Brokers, I knew I was That's close right. on that. Dr green I knew I had the Green Dragon part right for <laughs> sure, based on that thing you were wearing a second ago. Yeah, I looked good in it too, didn't I? Yeah, he had a, he had a pretty good uh, dragon costume on. But Shannon and I are gonna hang out after Wayne finishes his announcement. What you got for us, Wayne? What did you say? Elon Musk is, is a distraction? And what, <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. That's what I, that's what I thought. That's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> let's put this sucker over here. That way I don't have to hold it. Okay. Let's, let's scoot in a little closer to All it. All right, let's do it. Here, come on up closer with me. There we go. And we won't look at ourselves because that's weird. All right, now we don't have to look at ourselves anymore. Now it's just us. What's up, Shannon? Hey, Brian, how you doing? I'm good, man. So you were, you were telling me a little bit about, uh, well, you just sold your first snake in person, so congratulations I did. on that. That was amazing. I got this couple who came up to my booth looking for a single gene banana hatchling as a pet. And as I got to talking to them, I showed them a different snake that I thought would be better suited for them. And um, they, they're not gonna get it in breeding. And that snake, uh, it was a female, and I didn't think it was working out for them. So I'd rescued this uh, butter spider I paid for him from a person who uh, was leaving the area. I've had him for her five years. Um, kind of sad to see him go, because he's like second snake I ever had mm. since I left uh, when I was a child. And I see I'm tearing up, and I actually, I didn't expect that. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, pretty emotional to let him go. I watch football with him all the time. So it seemed like the right people? For the right people. Okay. He is a gentle guy. Spider, you know, he's got, uh, he does not have the wobble, but he has the stargazing, um, but not bad. And uh, they were looking for a pet that was gentle. So uh, that hatchling was just not the snake for them. So I was gearing them, steering them away to something that was more established. I had two, two like I said, two breeders. Sure, sure. And, uh, Boy, they bonded right away. You That's could just awesome. see it. Yeah. And uh, so it was the right snake for the right people at the right time. All right, cool. And I was here at the right time. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Just, just kind of like me pulling up right now here at this show so we can hang out and talk about it. Yeah. So you were, you were saying earlier your son, um, you were having an argument with your son about politics. And That's there, right. There was, uh, I mean, that, we were talking about that um, before I came back, but it, I paused you in the conversation because I was like, okay, this is what we need to record and this is what we need to talk about. But. Yeah. But it's tough, because once you hit record on the camera, it's like everything changes almost. Like, you know, versus uh, just a person-to-person -person conversation. Right. Versus... Well, the thing was, is that uh, I did a lot of things right as a man. I was a good father, but I didn't do the blessing right. I didn't bless my son. I didn't pass it on to him. He's not a Christian, now, and I struggle with that. Um, but we got into heated argument because I'm conservative in my values. Uh, I did, like I said, 26 years in the Army and dedicated myself. And um, I struggled. Uh, he said, uh, you need to get a hobby other than politics. And so I said, okay, I'll do that. And I started thinking about what I liked. And I remember as a kid, you know, I'd go catch garter snakes and bull snakes and even rattlesnakes and on the prairies of North Dakota. And uh, I changed. I came out of myself. I became a, a living person again, a new beginning. We had some PTSD from your service and... You know, yeah, I, I had some, I was in the first Gulf War and uh, deployed to uh, some other places and I, I saw some things that uh, people won't like see, but the majority of what I struggled with was the fidelity of my family, my military family. Um, I retired because uh, I was physically, I was going to Afghanistan and I got hurt. I tore my uh, tendon on my right hip and uh, 
everything went wrong in one year. I'd never had anything go wrong since I joined the Army. 26, 24 years of, of excellence. And then all of a sudden my life fell apart and I didn't know how to handle it. You know, physically, emotionally, spiritually, my relationship with my wife of 24 years ended. My kids both left the house. I was, uh, I weigh 215 pounds now. I was down to 140 pounds. And uh, anyway, I got that snake. And all of a sudden, uh, I'm now embracing a community that I hadn't, in, I'd never been in touch with. Um, this is pre-COVID. But then COVID, I, I found, I was introduced to Brian Cusco on YouTube and uh, a whole bunch of other great people. Um, and I felt part of some, even though they weren't there. And it gave me something to look forward to. So I started investing in snakes. And I got about a hey, hundred breeders right now. And I was telling you earlier, I clutched the hit a, a, a double hat sunset clown that I got from Miguel, uh, bred a, a yellow belly double head sunset clown to a cinnamon set double head. And uh, on my very first, or my second clutch, other than my first proof of a concept clutch, I hit two visuals. Wait, wait, you hit two yellow belly sunset clowns? Well, one, uh, one is, uh, I thought it was a yellow belly. It was some, I've consulted with some experts. They think it's more just a single gene sunset. But I did hit a cinnamon, and they're 66% hit clown. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. But what I was telling my mom, who came down to see me, this is how infectious this community is. My mom, bless her heart, she, uh, uh, she, she, she helped me through some tough times, you know. We were not, we were not close growing up. I was close with my dad, and, uh, but I became closer with my mom over time. And uh, when I was slipping away, she was making phone calls to my uncle and to people who are involved that she knew in the military. And uh, uh, I was wasting away, and, and she got a boot kicked in my backside. But anyway, she's fascinated by my fascination in snakes, but didn't like snakes. So she came down to see me here in Florida from North Dakota. And by the time she left, she's holding snakes. Now every every aspect of my business, uh, she wants to be involved in. Every clutch I do, I, I'm yet to do a live clutch cutting, but I do a live clutch cutting on, on FaceTime with my mom, and she's just blown away, you know? We have a great time. And it's improved our relationship now with my son, where we talk, uh, we don't see eye to eye on a lot of stuff, which is hard. But you know, that's uh, something you have to accept as, as they go their own way. Sometimes you have to leave to cleave, is what the Bible says. Leave to cleave? I haven't come across that verse yet. Yeah, you have to leave your family to cleave to uh, your spouse, or I think it's a metaphor for cleaving to God. You have to you have to leave the, uh, the values of your of your initial family. It's like similar to kicking the dust off the feet. I just hadn't heard the cleave because yeah. I think of cleave. I think of like a meat cleaver that cuts things in yeah, half. Yeah, this is cleave as in clutch. You know, cleave okay, to okay. you. Okay, cling. 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 To, cling. Oh. Yeah, that's uh, another word for it. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Well, speaking of that, I mean, so at the last show, the Pomona Reptile Show, we had a pretty cool fellowship group that met up before the show started on Sunday, and we, we did some worship, worship music, and we um, we prayed, and we went through some verses, and we, we kind of talked about it as a group, and, and that was real cool. And I, I thought you you mentioned that you wanted to do something like that at, like, all the shows, which is kind of what we talked about at Pomona, and just kind of getting... God's kingdom into the reptile community a bit more. Yeah, and you know, it's, you know, so many people are afraid of snakes because they think they're evil. And you know, when you think about it, they were on the boat, Noah's Ark. God had a reason to put them on that boat. They're not evil. They're not the serpent in the garden. And uh, I think the more that, that we represent our faith in this community, the more we'll be able to share those values. That custom interaction I just had, I mean, that touched me to no end to have that, you know, to, to, to guide them to the right snake. That was God helping me to make the right decisions for them. You say there's a lot of people afraid of snakes, not so much in the reptile keeping community. I, I'd say That's that true. there are a lot of people that are afraid of the idea of God or, wow. or um, 
submitting to that that power or just the lack of understanding of, of what God is when we, we talk about God. Yeah. And it's like some dude in the sky that's, you know, sprinkling down stuff or whatever. Right. Um, it was just so much bigger and more complex than that, I, yeah. I think. Um, but it's uh, it's tough. People people uh, don't want to... I don't, I don't know if it's people don't want to submit to that and that that's part of it. People want to be their own gods and... Uh, or, or, yeah. And Surely I've been my own God at one time and uh, many times in my life. Yeah. You know, willful disobedience is where I was living for a long time. Yeah, well, that's the thing that that was given. is like, a, I think one of the misconceptions I hear is like, well, you know, if God is all-powerful and sovereign and is in control of everything, then what, why doesn't he just stop, like, you know, um, bad things from happening here or that's right. hurt and pain here? And that, but then there's that whole idea of free will. We were also given free will. We, we, that's weren't, right. we weren't made to be puppets that he just controls and does everything he wants with. Amen. He gave us a choice yeah. to decide whether we wanted to participate in his will. And that's where the beginning came, the that's very right. first. And Adam fell. You know what yeah. that choice is like. Well, I'm, I'm going to try and do it on my own then. I'm going to, you know, right. I'm going to learn about what the knowledge of death and life on and and do that. And for, since then, we've been like living out that reality. Yeah. Here's something that sustains me that uh, I have, have really come to Absolutely. understand is in my last five or six years on this journey back from going along the way, is that life is my opportunity to develop a relationship with God. Every you know, we have this misconception that the highs are supposed to be, that's the good thing. Uh, we should strive for happiness. No, we should strive for emotional appropriateness. We should turn to God in everything and have a relationship with Him, just like we do with the flesh and blood of our brothers and sisters. I didn't understand that before. That, that I thought that, uh, like you were saying, that legalistic mentality of, you know, tote in the line kind of, no. Uh, not, not anymore. Today, when I'm sad, yeah, I don't want to stay in and uh, soak in it. But I, but I want to feel it, and I want to turn to God and say, okay, how are you wanting to change me? And how am I going to uh, spread your word and your gospel to other people through my actions through this troubling time? The same thing when I'm happy. For that matter, the same thing when I'm laissez-faire, when nothing's going on. You know, what is it about that time that uh, I need to look into myself and turn to God and say, okay, you know, why am I procrastinating here? You know? One of the challenges that I have sometimes when I'm trying to talk about this stuff and, and explain to other people, especially through video when I'm not able to just have a one-on-one, -on -one, which is much easier than you can have, listen to what somebody has to say, because you know, like right here, right now, like somebody's gonna maybe leave a comment and I won't be able to exactly respond to it. You know, I can go in the comments eventually and like, we can have a back and forth. Take but comment at Green Dragon bro uh, Brokers uh, on Instagram, all those negative stuff, send them to me. Well, not just negative stuff, just like, que like maybe questions or something, oh, like, why, yeah. why is this, that? And then instead of being able to like respond to that, question immediately and you know, it's not it, that's one of the challenges but the other challenge is that it, God how I understand God is like well I don't completely really yeah. I mean it's so much grander and greater than anything my human brain could ever understand and it's so much that it's literally literal eternity a literal eternity it would take to fully yeah. unravel all of the glory of God and so it, to just try and capture it in like a 10, 12 minute YouTube video is not possible, no. not even close. No. So that's one of the, sometimes, I, and I need to learn to let go of that and just be like, it's okay, I'm not gonna be able to cover everything that's in right. any single video or even in my entire volume or library of videos that I'll ever make, I'll never quite cover it. No, but uh, what a, what, what a splendid thing that you've done with your, uh, your gifts that God has bestowed upon you. And I, I, I tell you, um, Okay, Green Dragon Brokers. You might ask, well, what, what is that about? Well, I'm a patriot. I'm God first, but I'm a patriot too. Well, the Green Dragon uh, Inn was where Samuel Adams, they met to plot the revolution. So this is freedom. That's what it says. Freedom, serpents, hounds, and merchandise, right? All right, So all right. it all begins with freedom. I have the freedom to have a relationship with God and with his fellow believers, or I don't. Those people who don't uh, want to have a relationship with me because I'm a Christian, I accept that. I'm, you know, I, I, there's some people who have values that I don't share, 
kids that I won't interact with, I won't treat them differently um, uh, or look down upon them. Um, but, you know, they don't have the same values I do. I have to accept that. But There is something about those values that brings freedom. It's, it's something that was a past in uh, James, uh, second chapter of James, they're talking about the law that gives freedom or the, the law that brings liberty. And it's kind of a complicated concept, but like the idea of like following the Ten Commandments is something that gives you freedom. It's like some people say, well, they're locking me down. It's keeping me from doing all these different things. Yes. I adhere to these different rules versus uh, I like how Wayne blows into the microphone first to make sure that it's good. <sighs> all right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know it's coming. You, you can but, tell it's a Wayne blow. Too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, but anyway, I was, when we were going over that verse, so I'm, I've been hired on, I'm going to be hired on to do some youth worship leadership oh, at a church down the street. Pretty, pretty fun, pretty yeah. cool little thing, like just the spot, the timing of it all, it's a whole different story, but um, I was just kind of getting to know some of the kids that are going to be in the groups that I'll be working with and just meeting with wow. the guy that's there right now, and we're sitting down going through James, and that thing was in there, and I, my question to the whole group of kids was like, so what does that mean to you guys, you know, I know what it kind of means to me, the law that brings freedom and what that means to have a law, because it seems counterintuitive. Like a law keeps you from doing things versus a law that gives freedom. It's kind of a complicated idea, I think. Yeah, no, I, so, I, I, I got that. And this one girl, you know, she must be a freshman or something in high school, and she just like laid it out so beautifully. You know, I'm not going to even try to mess up her answer and like what she answered, but I just wanted to hear you know, how a group of kids thought about this thing that to me seems like a complicated concept. And she just laid out this beautiful explanation of like, yeah, that's, that's wonderful. That's a better answer than I could have so given. Cool. It's better than the thing I had in my head already. And, and it was just cool. That's, that's the thing I'm excited about is getting to explore my faith with kids who are in a different spot where I wasn't, you know, because I wasn't saved until I was 40. So I, I have a whole different perspective probably than they do. But to be able to like have that to bounce off of. And that's what I'd love to see in the reptile community too, too as well. And, and see that, like, what, what people's ideas are. And once they come in and make that decision to, like, accept. I want to partner with you on that because I think uh, we could reach some people. Uh, I think uh, it reminds me, I don't know the verse. I'm not, a, uh, I, I don't have that kind of memory to memorize verses yet. Um, I'm still praying that I develop that skill set. I don't have it. There's a story in the Bible after Christ is crucified where, uh, and I don't remember which apostles it was heading in, but they were at the gate of beautiful where Christ and them had gone many times. And this says there was a beggar sitting there at the gate of beautiful. Now, Christ could have healed that beggar every time he walked through. He passed him a number of times. Maybe the guy wasn't ready for whatever. I don't know. But the Bible verse I'm talking about says that these two apostles healed him. And it was that community of believers that did that. And they did it at the gate of beautiful. Think about that. That's beauty. When we help other people to come to a realization that their home is in, in God's hands, that's what it's all about. You know, that's beautiful. I just, to me, that's like one of the, my favorite stories in the Bible. I just, and I, to be honest with you, I had a tragic story when I was on active duty of a, a soldier of mine whose parents were killed, and I had to, they were murdered, and his, his sister was kidnapped, and I had to tell him that uh, event. And that's the verse I read before that. So I prepared, and, and I, I never, was adequate in that moment for him, I'm sure. But I was, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't there uh, to to represent me. I was there to represent God. And I walked that kid through the worst time of his life, and he is now a, a, a social worker helping other people. That's beautiful. It is beautiful, and it's also tragic what a broken world it is that we live in. It's, it's. I can understand why people have a hard time, like. Yeah, Un grasping that there that there is a ultimate creator that would that would allow stuff like that to happen. That's but that's part of the part of how it's, it's just such a broken world we're in. It it's just so it's such it's so messed up right that's now. Why Job is so important, right? Yeah. You know, because he uh, here he has everything, and uh, yet he is blameless uh, through the worst 
torment. It's wild. That the, it's just a wild thing, man. Yeah, it's, a, it's a wild it concept to, to reel in. I, I understand the confusion that people have, but once you yeah. get there, man, and you start to, once you submit to that and you, you allow the Lord to lead instead of trying to lean on your own understanding of, of what is happening, what's going on, the things that he reveals to you are incredible. Yeah. You know, little pockets of heaven start to open up all over the place. Yeah, so do those uh, character defects, right? Yeah, definitely got character defects. How they come back and uh, reach out. Oh man, yeah, character <laughs> defects are real. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a thing. <laughs> yeah. Well shoot, Shannon, um, I'm glad that we came down and just sat here and talked, just had a little flow of consciousness, consciousness together and I'm, I'm looking forward to having more and more conversations like this with folks within the reptile community specifically. And like that, that morning we had there in Pomona before the show and yeah, I Somebody. saw you guys scouting that out. It was like... It was cool. We had about 15, 15 guys got together, and I'd, I'd love to see that grow at, at other shows and have more people getting together and just, like, focusing on the positive and, you know, going in, going in with that mindset of, of submitting to, to God and allowing Him to lead to, to glorious spots instead of the, what, the opposite. Yeah. And letting, letting the Amen. reptile world become a place of, of damnation. And, yeah, I agree. And, yeah. So fabulous, Brian. Yeah, man. I want to partner with you in that too, because uh, you know I had a conversation last night with another breeder who I like for different reasons. There are like three or four people who are like I consider mentors, you know, in this. And like I told you when I first met you, you didn't know it, but you were like the inspirational, spiritual mentor in this hobby for me that I needed. You were there. God put you at a distance, but He put you in face forward in my life. You challenged me to be a better human being. Other people do that. All you have to do is sit down with them and have a real conversation if you get the opportunity to find out that there are some really good people in this community and in this world. The, 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 the people who want you know, to wanted to to not participate in the, the backstabbing or backtalking of other people. Those people are here. I met one last night. Uh, KG from Bomb Project. Oh yeah, KG's awesome, dude. Dude, he gave me an hour and a half of his time, and we didn't talk snakes. We talked about character and people. We didn't talk about the Lord because it didn't ever come up, and I didn't want to force it upon him. But we were talking about the fruits of the spirit. I, I was one time I stopped to just kind of silently pray before a meal when KG was sitting around, and, and he looked over at me. He's like. You praying for us? I was like, yeah, yeah. He says, well, thank you very much. I appreciate that, yeah. I won't, I won't forget that. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome, Brian. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, bro. Love you, man. Love you too, bro. Love you guys out there. Take care of your animals. Breed responsibly. Make sure you don't uh, uh, let people buy impulsively. Yeah. We've got to keep this community, uh, you know, in the right direction. 100%. Amen. 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 Take care of yourselves, take care of each other. See you on the next video. Aloha. <laughs> nice.